Ooh, welcome back to Sip Life. It's your Uncle John, and today we are going to talk Kanichi Rum. Before I get started, real talk, I want to say thank you for checking out my channel. Uh, without you guys, this thing wouldn't really be possible and there would be no point. So thank you. Now, let's talk about the beverage. Today's rum, like I said, is uh, Kenichi rum. Now this rum has like some other characteristics on the name part of it that I'm gonna call out in a second. Let me grab the bottle, I'll tell you what it says. So we have an artisanal double wood rum. Now, I do like this rum. Uh, it's pretty good, I've tried it before, but I've never tried it and actually like try to pull out the flavors and characteristics like I'm gonna do today. So let's get started. Now it's time to begin the sip. Now, let me tell you how I'm gonna do this, just so you kind of have a heads up. So the way I like to put this thing down is I like to go ahead and do a neat round and then a on the rocks round. If you want to participate, you could do the same thing, flip flop or none, whatever you want to do. The reason why I add the rocks in there is just because it kind of changes the flavor uh, when you add a little bit of water, a little bit of liquid. I like mine a little chilled. Um, generally, anyway, if I'm drinking something in public, I don't like to go just straight heat, but you know, you drink it how you like it, right? So that's how we're gonna get started. Just give you a heads up. All right, so I added two cubes of ice. Two cubes. So I added two cubes of ice. They're gonna call me two cubes. I only do two. I don't do more than that. I think, you know, if you go more than that, it's like overkill. But again, that's just my personal opinion. Now that I've added two cubes, let's see how it smells and tastes. Is it different? Is it the same? What do you think? I don't know, but I'm about to find out. So here we go. So on the nose, it definitely gets a little bit more light. So now it's, it's lighter. Uh, it smells it smells amazing this way as well. It's not uh, as pronounced, so it's light, but you can still pick up the sweet flavors. You get more of the vanilla, right? Less of the oak and less of the spice. Yeah, that's pretty good. Okay, so now let's go ahead and get a taste in. Let's see what this thing tastes like on the rocks. So on the rocks, it tastes about the same. So I'm getting some vanilla, some oak, and some spice, but spice is more on the lighter side now. Yeah. Uh, sugar level still a little bit there, not much. So texture um, with the with the water with the ice added in, it melts a little bit. It makes it a little bit thinner, uh, so it's a little bit more smooth, a little bit more uh, less on the thick side, uh, but it's still you know still good. And then on that finish, uh, I would say now it's still medium but closer to uh, short, like a nice bridge between short and medium, right? Right there in between. And let me get one more sip just to tell you about the complexity. The complexity is still uh, kind of about the same. I would say it's some somewhat complex. Um, uh, just because there are different flavors and you know it's been aged. Um, so yeah. yeah. I will go back and change one thing though. So on the, on the texture, it's now a little bit more smooth to me. Like it's a little bit more, um, it's actually thicker. The way that the, the ice and water blended in with the, with the liquor, um, which is interesting. Yeah, so I would say it's smooth. Now that I've given you my opinion, let's look up what they actually say about the drink and what it's supposed to taste like. Now, Kanichi XO is uh, distilled and kind of produced in Barbados, right? So that's kind of cool. So Caribbean rum is made in Caribbean, so it's legit when it comes to that. Now, what makes this pretty interesting is the process that it goes through in order to give its uh, unique flavor profile. So the way that they do that is they put it in bourbon casks for a good bit of time. After it's aged in bourbon cask, then they take it out and then they put it in cognac cask. 
Now, when they put it in the cognac cast, this is the finishing stage. So they don't leave it there very long, maybe a couple months. I don't have the particulars, but I'm assuming the finisher is only usually a couple months. The notes that you're supposed to pick up from this rum are sugarcane, no doubt, vanilla, I taste that one, uh, cocoa, mm, I didn't get that, and coconut. I don't know that. I didn't taste a strong coconut in there, but maybe it was there. I don't know. I'm not a coconut guy, so I can't tell you. The last thing I want to tell you is the company that produces this particular liquor. Now, they have several other spirits that they produce. Vodka, which I'll cover. Uh, their version of Froggy V. They have another cognac, which I actually have right here. I was doing for tasting. Um, so I'll cover that one, too. But the, the brand is called Mansion Farand. So I guess they're a French company and they have their foothold in several different spirits uh, around the, the Caribbean and the globe. So yeah, there we go. Now don't forget, go ahead and hit that like button if you haven't done so, if you enjoyed the content. And also go ahead and subscribe if you're not a part of the Sip Life family. And if you have tried this particular rum and you have your thoughts on it, throw that in the comments, let me know. Or if you got some suggestions that I should try, do that too. And that is it so i know i didn't tell you a story today i apologize for that now you know uncle john loves telling stories but today there was no story to be told so until next time sip safely and i'll see you soon